now. Come grab her. Come grab her. Hey guys, Tom Davis here, America's canine educator. I am sitting on an airport floor um, putting together a video for you guys. A lot of you guys have been asking about the aggressive Tibetan Mastiffs that I've been getting into the facility, as well as the Russian dogs I've been getting and all the, the big floof dogs who don't like people they don't know. And so I'm putting this video together and I'm not in my facility so I can't do a proper in intro of the dog. And basically this dog does not like people she doesn't know, tries to go after people when they come into her house. Um, and she's just young, she's less than a year old. So I'm gonna walk you through the process of how to take like an inherited dominant uh, protective dog and help them become integrated into a normal household uh, with obedience. And this is the first session, so we get a lot done in the first hour. So that's what this video is, and I just wanted to make a video, and I hope you enjoy it. So all of the work when you're, tr when you're training Mastiffs, and, and specifically in Tibetans, because I have a lot of experience with them, um, and, and a lot of the Russian dogs that I see too, it's very similar, very just, hey, I'm here, and if you don't teach me what to do, I become a detonated time bomb. Mm -hmm. So what you have to be able to do is have the, because like if I train her, she's going to be good with me. She's not going to be good with you. Right. So all of the training that we're going to be doing, you as the dog owner need to, to know how to do this. Mm -hmm. Okay. She's nervous with people she doesn't know, which then right. can lead to barking, which then could lead to nipping and all that stuff. So when she's at the gate and she's, rawr, 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 you know, barking mm -hmm. at people at the door, in the right. car, um, property, etc. Right. Again, we're not going to be able to pull that out of her, but within a couple of days, you can certainly get some obedience on her to say, hey, thank you so much for letting me know somebody's here. Go lay down. And that's what you want to do. You can't teach a fish not to swim. Right. That's not teaching a Tibetan massive not to be protective of possible intruders. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing that you have to do is you as the owner have to be able to manage the situation to know if you're going to have people over to the house, your obedience has to be good. You can have a parade of people come over hooting and hollering if you tell her to go to her place and her place is really good. Mm -hmm. so and again, if she's like, hey, somebody's in the house, I don't like them, but you're like, go to your bed and she's like, oh, okay, fine. And if you're not working on these things, you're gonna continue to run into problems because of her innate primalistic, hey, I'm a Tibetan Mastiff and I wanna go and bark my head off at that person. You can get them civil in the house and you can get them to be a dog in the house, but they're gonna play the role of a Tibetan Mastiff no matter if you put them in an apartment <laughs> or a house, or a farm. They're gonna play that role. Good. Sit. Yes, good sit. Stay. Shh, no. Shh, no. All right, come grab her, come grab her. So what you guys just saw was basic frustration. She redirected on the leash, came after me because I was basically pissing her off. She didn't want to do what I was asking her to do. Go figure, she's a Tibetan. Um, but then I immediately took the leash back and, and I defused the situation. So um, she's a big dog to be doing this type of stuff. But if you continue to watch, you'll see the progression we make in this first session within the hour. I'm excited about it. I hope you guys are too. All right, let me see her back. Going back to the breed, they go, nah, I'm not doing what you want. <laughs> I'm a, so, so you have to then weigh out your options to say like, that's how she's gonna be to people she doesn't know coming in the house if she wants to be. It's not gonna be all the time. That's the thing is like, it's not gonna be consistent. So like she just did that to me now, come on. Good, good girl. And then she's gonna be here and she's gonna be okay. So you should be working on leave it, recall, and place stay. If you had 20 people come into your house and your place stay was good, she's not gonna come after somebody like she just did, right? But there's gonna be those times where she's gonna want to, but it won't matter because your obedience is good. Bonnie, place, sit, stay. And as you advance, you start using remote collars to get her more advanced with that right. stuff. So you can. So she's very confident, she knows what she wants. And so with Tibetans, you have to make sure that you're navigating them through the process to say, all right, be a dog, but these four things you have to master because I want you to not be a liability right. and to be a good dog for me. But then at the same time, like because of what they're bred for, we have to realize that having that instinctual, primal, primitive, like, 
hey, I'm a Tibetan Mastiff. You know, what are you doing in my yard, Mr. Wolf, Coyote, whatever, man, right. or stranger or whatever? That's always going to be ingrained right there. Mm -hmm. But making sure you can turn that on and off is up to you. And I have to instill everything to you as the dog owner, because even if she listens to me, she's going to go to you and go, I'm not doing any of that for you. <laughs> so I have to make sure that you can do it. Right. So what I want to do is work on leave it, place, place, stay. So again, all this training, especially with these bigger dominant dogs, is going to come from you. Because right. she was staying for me decent. And then as soon as you took the leash, so that's what I mean is like the transfer. She exactly. She, she knows. She knows I'm not going to, I wasn't going right. to. Right. So the transfer from me to you is what's going to matter because you can, again, and I've seen it so many times with this type of dog is you send them away or you have somebody else train them. Even if I went to your house and trained, it's like, if you don't know how to do it, right. she's going to be like, okay, I'm, cause she's smart enough to know, okay, you're the person in charge and you're the person who feeds me. And that's mm -hmm. all I care about. Right. So work on your stay, let the leash down just a little bit and just walk away to stay. Say. Nope, don't don't ask or tell her. Oh, so, say. There, <laughs> good. Good. Let's say. Good. Now give her a break. Break. Perfect. Good job. Well done. Good. Let's do it again. Please. Do you know? Please. Good. Good, please. Now stay. Stay. Nope. Stay. You don't have to yell it. <laughs> <laughs> just say stay. Stay. Good. It's just voice inflection. Stay. Good. Now you just stay right here because there's going to be a distraction coming through. So as this dog comes through, you just stay. Stay. Good. Stay. Put your leash down a little bit. Nice and relaxed. You're good. Good stay. Good. Dog comes through. Good stay. Good. And then break. Break. Yes. Good girl. Well done. So same thing when you're trying to teach her something, make sure you're also empathetic to the fact of her trying to learn a new behavior. Mm -hmm. So she doesn't know this that well yet, but she will by the end of this hour. Right. So when you ask her to place, what you want to do is instead of like you came up and you kind of forced her on, oh, okay. that's not going to, that's end goal, that's not going to work for you because then you have to place her. Okay. My goal is for you and your house to be able to say, go to your place and she goes there. That's so you try. Place. Good place. Good. Good. Now just back up a little bit. Good. And so just back up a little bit more. Good stay. Good stay. So as we continue this, it'll get better and better and better. And then pretty soon, the better will become from you going away. And then you'll also increase your ability to send her to the place from a distance. Mm -hmm. So you should be able to essentially be on one end of the house and say, Bonnie, go to your place. And then her go there. And then you walk out and she's there. And that'll help when you have distractions over because again, she's going to go, Hey, I'm a Tibetan Mastiff. You're coming into my house. Mm -hmm. I have a problem with that. Right. You say, okay, I agree, but they're my friends. You go lay down. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Right. Good. Give her a break. break. Good. Break. Yeah, nope. Stay. Tell her to stay. Stay. Freaking got that bug. Going back to the original breed of the dog, understanding like this is one of the most primitive breeds you can get. Like you get a German Shepherd, you'll get 50 flavors. Right. With Tibetans, they were bred in Mongolia, China. They're, they were bred to defend off wolves, mm -hmm. tigers. Right. I mean, people are not a problem for them. Right. So, but historically speaking, every Tibetan I've worked with, they're all the same. They're all gonna go, hey, what's, what's that dog doing? What's that person doing? So it's not to like reprogram this, not be that way. It's to say like, I get you. Good, so let's add some distractions. So take a step further, just walk around. Stay. When we're doing this scenario, the stay is gonna be more important than the send away place as of right now. Like she's within this 30 minutes, 35 minutes that we've been working, the stay is, the stay is going to be more important because at home you can work on the stay tonight. The send away place is just going to take a couple days versus a couple hours. Good stay. Call her. Break. Break. Nice job, Bonnie. Good job. So that was a lot of shenanigans that probably is not going to happen in your house, but... I have a six and an eight. Well, then maybe it will. <laughs> One of her siblings, they, they posted a picture of a coyote in pieces. 
that the dog got. There are a lot of coyotes there right now, and the chickens are starting to disappear. So yep. I and don't that... know, like, I want to be able to have her help, but I don't trust her to, like, come back. I don't know how right, to and that's, but... deal with that. And that's a that's a great question. When you get it again, when you because I I've worked with a lot of Tibetans before, from puppies to adulthood, mm -hmm. and I've even worked with the ones that are breeding. You know, for these not for these well well. You know, these aren't exp these aren't inexpensive dogs. I mean, right. they're I mean, you get what you pay for. They're real dogs, right. and when you don't put them to work, they become they take their work. Like again, you just told me about her litter mate decapitating a, a, a coyote. That's what they're supposed to be doing. They're like, all right, job done, check, what's next? And if, yeah. you're, if you don't have some sort of control over that, it's like a loaded gun all over your house all the time. Mm -hmm. We do off-leash training. People come from all over the country to do off-leash training here because it's something that we've done for a very long time and we're very comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. And that's where your obedience here, because this is an only an hour session and we're gonna get done a lot today, mm -hmm. but over time, you're gonna be able to have her off-leash and have the same amount of control off-leash that you do on-leash. And that's what we're going to translate and copy and paste to that to that area. But left, touch, go to watch. watch. Good. So even with that distraction and the bangs and all this stuff going on, we're still able to accomplish the play stay within an hour. Stay. And now your job is to go home and practice this because what you have to practice is the send away to the place because ultimately after you practice a couple days, come, touch, you should be able to do that. Come, touch, and that, come, touch, coucher, all that. That's just with a couple days of practice, okay? All right, guys, thank you for watching. If you haven't yet, don't forget, like, subscribe to my channel. I hope this was informative for you. Like I said, we've been getting a lot of these Tibetans the last couple years, um, and this is, uh, this is something that's going on with them, and it's not something that's necessarily going on in a bad way. It's just people don't realize that these dogs are that protective and they're that one-dimensional in who they want to listen to. And so this is a good encompassing like session for you guys to realize that not only do these dogs need serious training, but it really, really has to do with the owners as well so i hope you guys liked it don't forget like subscribe to my channel leave a comment below let me know what you thought of the video peace